What's up, my pilots? And Grafonja here. We're back playing Minecraft with Redstone. I got a big old thing to show you guys today. So uh, the first first bit is it's got the same sort of input uh, as the last little thing we looked at with the nine uh, button display. Except I added another thing for zero up here, and uh, I made them levers instead of buttons, so he could leave them on or off. So let me check out. Let me show you what this does. I'm going to turn on five, and we're going to look over here and see a five. I'm going to turn on 7, we're going to look over here, and see a 7. I'm going to do, let's do 6 next. Over here we've got a 6! Sweet as, let's do 0. There's your 0. Nice. So whenever you turn on one of these levers, it shows you whatever number you asked for over here on the 7 segment display. That's what this does. So basically the whole point of this design is that I've taken a 7 segment display and I've made it so that rather than having to turn off the segments individually and control them one by one with like a piston memory array, um, all you have to do is turn on one of nine, or rather ten signals, and you'll get one of the ten digits coming out. One lever, I get five different segments activated over there. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with the, how well this turned out. Actually, it's not, it's not, it's actually pretty fast even, which I was worried it wouldn't be. Okay, so first things first. Same old idea for getting these signals from a uh, 3x3 three three on a wall to being flat on the ground right down here. The only thing that's different is there's one more torch up here. This is where the zero lever is. I was going to put it... Actually, I was going to put it somewhere else, somewhere better. Uh, like underneath the, uh, the 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 1, or rather the 8. Like, like on a phone, the zero would be down there. But I, I realized too late that I, <laughs> I would put those below the ground out here. So I just put it up here. Uh, that's kind of an afterthought, actually. The whole zero line is sort of uh, not connected to the rest of it. I just added it on later. So here's where this, that line comes down. It's just over here, and it's off of the side from where the two was, or the eight, on this on this end here. So it goes off by itself. Okay, so that just gets the nine lines from the wall onto these repeaters and lines on the ground without them getting confused with each other, just like we had in the last bit. So then what I do is I take those nine lines, and I just run them all separately without running into each other at all, keeping them carefully keeping them separate so they don't overlap or send each other signals or whatever. Uh, and then I have, uh, this is the crux of the device here. Uh, basically the way that this goes uh, is this purple lines running this way and then we have the yellow, the yellow bit underneath. So what happens here is, the, okay so here's the idea. Let me, let, me, let me actually skip this step and I'll go to the, the, the end. So these green lines are, are for the seven segments of the display. Each one of these green lines turns off one of the segments, or rather on, but it's turning off the pistons for you to see the, the output. So each of those green lines runs into one of the seven orange segments on the, on the piston uh, controlled display over here. And so let me turn on, let me turn on eight because that'll do all of them so we can see. So you see all these lines are powered now, which means that all of these are turned off and we, and we get an eight on the other side. So the question becomes, and this was the challenge that I was trying to, this is the problem I was trying to solve, the challenge I was trying to overcome uh, with the 7 segment display, because I, I thought, they're great, and they're so cool, you can, you know, you get these clocks and things you can make, but it seems like every time you want to have a number on a 7 segment display, you have to have this piston memory array uh, in order to decode what number it is and, and control these 7 segments, and then like another line for a carry bit or whatever, you have to have all these different uh, memory devices to control the, the seven se segments separately. And some of them can get pretty big, pretty complicated. Now granted, the stuff I've got back there is freaking enormous, uh, but it's really simple. And so basically what I was trying, the problem I was trying to solve is what I want to have, so I want to have these nine lines, let's just do three. I want to have these nine lines, and I want it to be, so that, or, there's only three here, but pretend there's nine. And I want to have it so that when I turn on power to one, it connects to like these lines, or the, or the right the right uh, ones over here. So say I've got a five second display and I've got three numbers. Like when I turn on this line, I want it to turn on this guy and that guy. And when I turn on this line, I want it to do this guy, that guy, and that guy. When I turn on this line, I want it to do that guy, that guy, that guy, or whatever. So the, the whole idea is I've got seven different outputs and I've got nine different inputs, and I want, or ten different inputs actually, if you count zero, and I want 
one of those 10 inputs to control any number of the seven outputs. So some of them, like eight, it just goes straight in through to all of them. Turning off, or turning on, I should say on, turning on all of the segments. And then you have others like one that only go through to two of them. So how are you going to do that? How are you going to keep everything from getting mixed up, everything from getting confused? You have too many lines running. And so what I figured out is um, this device sort of uh, has one downside, and that's that it allows a little bit of overlap. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but first, here was, the, here was the bright idea I had, which is this, this yellow part down here. So what happens here is I have these redstone lines here, and they're, they're typically turned on, because remember, these are torches down here on the wall, and so the default for these lines is, then, is for them to be powered. And so what's, what's going on here is I've got these ten different lines, and they're all typically powered. And then somebody throws a lever and says, hey, give me a two! Two! <laughs> Give me a three! Three! <laughs> it's like a mad football game, it's great. So someone says, Give me a three, and this three line, snaking around down there, gets turned off. So then, what I figured is, Oh, you know what? I know how to split one input into nine, or one input into seven inputs. I'll use torches. And so what I did was, I said, Oh, okay, I'll run a line along like this, and I'll put a bunch of torches on the side. And so, whenever the line runs past, it'll turn off those torches. And then, depending on which segments I want to activate or deactivate, I can put the torches in different places. So you can see this line here has five torches, and this line here has six. So there's some missing on the end here. So basically, uh, that's the way that the output is decoded. So, when this line turns off, it allows some torches to turn on. And where and how many torches you have affects how many of the output lines turn on, which is what does the display. So check this out. Okay, so here's the logic. I'm going to show you how to do a number. Let's do, let's do one just because it's easy. It's only got two, two lines that have to work. So I'm going to flip one on so we can find it back there. I think it's the third one. No, it's fourth. So it's the fourth line right here. And, or it was the third before I had zero on the end. That's right. Okay. So when I have one turning on, Okay, where do I where do I put my my torches? Or where do I want to send power to these lines on the yellow circuit? You see that that's what's happening here, right? Whenever the torches come on, they drop the power down, and the repeaters keep the keep the signal from getting mixed, and they come over here to the output. So I so I went over here to the my display, and I said, okay, I want to have a one. Where are those? Where's the one? Okay, it's here, and it's here. So I went and found those two lines that I hooked up. Okay, so here's one, there's the other, and I followed those two lines back. Here they are. Look at that. They're right next to each other. How easy. And I said, okay, these are the two lines that I want to get powered whenever someone flips the lever for one. And so I went over to where my line for one is, which I have a sign for, it's derp, it's right here. And so I said, okay, whenever someone turns off this line, I want to have a torch here, and I want to have a torch here, in order to uh, power those two lines. And that's how it works. Someone flips a lever, it turns off a line, and the, the proper torches are activated. Because, uh, so when I said, okay, well, I don't want any of the others to turn on, well, I just don't put any torches there. It's pretty easy. So, this effectively um, acts like uh, the piston memory array sort of outputs do when you have a, a clock that's, that's attached to one of these displays. The advantage of this, uh, I think, is that you, you really can, you can, first off, well, I guess it's the same as a piston up, uh, array in terms of you can control the output exactly however you want. So if I wanted my one to be weird and like have one other line turn on, <laughs> like if I wanted that, to, if I wanted this to be a symbol for something, maybe it's like a secret code in a adventure map or something, uh, and they have to like guess what the symbols mean. I don't know. If I wanted this to be a symbol when it typically isn't, all I have to do is put a torch down in the right place. So I say, okay, well, what if I want that line next to that one to be on or whatever else? I just put those torches in the appropriate places, and I, I get the appropriate output. So as large as, as it is, and as complicated as it might at first seem, the idea is pr is pretty simple, but that, that was the hard part, actually. <laughs> What's coming up was I spent a while testing the different designs, trying to figure out how to get these lines to not mix with each other, and then eventually just, I realized that if I was willing to have this take up a lot of space, it was really simple to do it. Uh, so this is how it goes. I feel like I could explain this more and, and maybe even better if I talk about it some more. 
Uh, so the rest of this video is probably going to be me repeating myself, but um, I'm hoping that this design sort of gets some positive feedback, just because I want to see if, if this actually, people actually think this is going to be a useful <laughs> thing to have. You know, there's a two. So you come over here to the last line and figure out, okay, where are my five segments to turn on for the two? There it goes. I'm hoping that hoping people will find uses for this, because uh, I think it's I think it's neat to be able to flip one one line and activate however many on a display. So in general, uh, you could actually extend this to be a hell of a lot of different things. Uh, you could you could decode you could program essentially this big decoding unit uh, however you want it. And honestly, there there are probably there are probably more efficient ways. To, to build this. I, I didn't spend a whole lot of time trying to make this tiny because I have a freaking infinite world here. Um, so I'm not exactly sure how... It's it's freaking large. I didn't even bother measuring it. It's freaking large. I'll just say that. So I, I don't know what you could do to make it smaller. Uh, this design in itself I think is already about as small as it could be because you can't have these lines next to each other without them mixing up and you can't have repeaters everywhere because then the torches won't turn on. And actually, you can't even have them right next to each other anyway, because they don't have any place for the torches if you do that. So it's a little bit, a little bit weird. And uh, in terms of the fact that it's totally incompressible, there's no way to make this bit smaller, at least. Now, of course, the the amount of green stuff over here could likely be shorter. And if you had a, a smarter way of, of lining up these signals, you could probably use less redstone. I'm sure that this is not the best way to wire it. It was just the, the way that came to me while I was trying to design it the first time. So, uh, yeah. I think it's pretty cool. And I'm, I'm very happy with how well it turned out. I was worried when I started making it that it wasn't going to work at all. And then I, I had this epiphany that was like, oh, I can just use torches. I can use lines of torches and that'll be so easy and it'll be working. And sure enough, it does. I wish that this were more of a two-way conversation right now. Like, I feel like if I were explaining this to someone in person, they would be like, wait, 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 explain that part again, or I don't understand what this part does. Uh, and I, I, don't, I can't hear those questions until after the video is already up. But it wouldn't probably, probably aren't enough of them for it to merit making a second video. I guess just a few tips. Um, the way that I kept these lines from getting confused down here is every other one of them is a repeater, and then I immediately took the ones that weren't repeaters and sent them up, so they ended up being two blocks above the people next to them. Because if there's only one block difference, they'll, they'll jump down. Uh, but if it's two, like there's a space that you can see here uh, between these two, they don't get mixed up. And then I just came up one more and then down in order to keep this line from mixing with that one. You see, if that were one block lower, they'd get confused. But if I can just go up and then right back down, it doesn't matter. And then I put all the repeaters in in order to make sure that they all had power all the way to the end. It actually, I think, is exactly 15 blocks. Because it's. Well, no, it's seven. It's thirteen blocks. So you could, you could have one more torch on the end here, uh, one more space and one more torch before you had to put repeaters in in order to make it longer. So that's what that's how you could extend this. Actually, uh, if you wanted to, you could just put more blocks out here without, without the sign in the way, obviously, uh, and just keep doing their, their pattern of repeaters and and torches. And you could program, hell, you could program ten different uh, displays this way. All you have to do is just have one of these blocky chunk things for each uh, line. And I, I bet if you were smart, uh, I'm, uh, certainly it would be easy. To do, I think it would be pretty easy, actually. You could have this line go like, oh, well, you know, I'm going to try and be clever about this. I'm going to take this line. I'm going to curl it up here, run it over here somewhere. And then I'm going to the, build this exact same thing on top of itself. So if you had 10 different output digits that you wanted to have connected to a lever uh, for like some kind of code or whatever for an adventure map or something you could just put this whole thing on top of itself now of course you'd have to have enough space between this block and the one that was to be above it so that this this uh, torch doesn't power the next guy up I think all you would need to have is a uh, one space of air one block of air in between the two and you'd be fine so, but then it would be easy to run the one line from that lever around like this, and then you build the exact same thing up here, and your line would go here, you know, you'd lay your torches down up here, and you could you could run all of these lines out to the next digit, or whatever else you wanted to put on it. So I, th I think that it's got a lot of potential to be expanded, uh, but if you're going to do that, you definitely would want to expand it vertically, 
This making this any bigger horizontal would be disastrous. It would not even fit inside a mountain anymore. So yeah, that's how you could expand it. Just keep putting more on top like that. And I think that would be pretty pretty space efficient, I think, for the amount of logic that it's doing. It's, it's decoding as many different segments as you want. So if, if you were doing something even more generic, you could do a, a display with as many segments as you liked, which is, which is the same as doing a bunch of displays, really. Uh, so if you had this taller, or if you had it bigger, or, or whatever, and, and you just had like 18 segments or 100 segment displays that displayed entire pictures, that would be a good use of this, actually. You could have these be lines, and you could make this huge, and then you could have one lever turn on a big picture, and it would turn on enough lines that you'd get an idea of what the picture was supposed to be. Like, you throw this lever, and you get a giant smiley face. You throw that lever, and you get a giant frowny face, or whatever. Or you throw this lever, and you get words. Like, that would be crazy if it, if it spelled out different things based on whatever. And you, you could easily... Um, all you need to have is just more lines. And you could get all 26 letters. You could do whatever else you wanted here, as long as you had a, a nice way to spell each letter with seven or however many segments. So this is extendable in pretty much any way you could think of. Uh, it's just however however creative you can be. This, that's what you could use this for. <laughs> for. So uh, I guess that's really all there is to say about it. Uh, of course, there will be a world download in the description, so you guys can come on the world and fool around with it yourself. In general, I'd recommend on these uh, world downloads I've been putting up that you play in creative mode with the difficulty on like peaceful or whatever, just to make sure that you don't get anything Enderman spawning or whatever, and moving things around, or any weird problems like that. That way, and also, you could probably just, you can turn the creative mode on and off if you have too many items. That's what this is here. Uh, so that way you can try out the zipper elevator and see if the water break kills you, which it shouldn't. So, yeah, so the download will be in the description. Thanks again uh, for watching, and please give me your, uh, your give me your suggestions of things that you'd like to see done in Minecraft. Uh, I still haven't done anything with minecarts, so I want to do some minecarts eventually. I'm not in a big hurry to get involved with minecarts because I don't really like them that much. But I know that a railroad station, uh, like a, a switchyard, is definitely in the future for this for this world. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time on Let's Play Minecraft with Redstone.